Lessons.net, and I'm going to be looking at a game from Chorus Vic and Z 2006 with Humpy Conneroo beating the brakes off of John Jan Smeets. So uh, we're we're starting off, you know, D4, Knight F3 is very flexible, move order C4 E6, uh, pretty standard stuff. Okay, so we'll C6. Mr. Smeets is playing the Slav defense. And this is pretty standard move order. And with bishop d3, you know, there's a lot of moves here. You can play queen c2, you can play bishop d2, uh, pretty much anything. But bishop d3 is pretty main line. This kind of invites the uh, the Marin with with captures here. And now b5. So this is the Marin defense. And so with bishop b7 and a6, I believe this is called the Wade variation. And so now c5. So the idea, you know, this is very cool defense in the semi-slav. Black is going to be trying to create a very dynamically imbalanced position. And by playing c5 immediately, you know, he's, he's obviously opening up the bishop and, and trying to put some, some immediate pressure on, on white center before white can uh, kind of consolidate and, and try to gain a, a little bit of a space advantage. So with d5, this is where it starts getting a little dicey. So if, if black tries to take here, is going to be a lot of unpleasantry, you know, a lot, a lot of unpleasant pressure on the e file with the with black's king stuck here. So probably not recommended to take the pawn. So instead, with queen c seven, this is kind of a transposition of moves. I, I I think you can also see c four a lot here. You don't really see e five because uh, the the pawn is just it, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense with, with what black's trying to do. And uh, white's probably just going to maneuver to try to play f4 right away and try to break the center anyway. So queen c7, the capture and pawn on e6 looks a little weird, kind of a little fragile, but it is doing a good job of protecting these two, these, you know, d5 and f5 squares. And, um, you know, maybe if you see the immediate knight g5, I believe, c4, and if captures, I don't know, this, this gets a little bit messy to, to be honest here but I, I, I think um, maybe I, I think black is going to be getting some compensation there um, in the form of c4 and um, maybe he can also defend with queen c6 possibly that was that was mr. Smith's his idea there but instead bishop c2 and c4 is kind of a, a transposition of moves and this is the normal move knight c5 you know, putting the pressure here and also defending the weakness on e6. And so queen f3, and this, this seems to be the standard treatment, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty normal book line here, bishop d6, and now queen h3. So queen h3 is a pretty cool move, you know, putting the pressure on this guy and maybe in the future I am that h7 pawn as well. Also preventing h6, you know, to kick the kick the knight on g5 and queen d7. I think this is where Smeets just he is. I, I think this is where he started going wrong. This is where it gets difficult because it, and I don't really know what happened with queen d7 because just rook d1 is a very normal move, and now black is looking a little silly with queen e7. So he's kind of wasting a move, and now Conaru, you know, once she seizes the initiative, she is a dangerous player. So she plays e5, and now a nice move, bishop g6. So it's always nice to, you know, the king is cut. It's cut off, it's got to go to the king side. And now the rook on h8 is going to have a real tough time trying to get in the game. So bishop e3, so threatening takes, and knight e6. Not a nice tactic for black. So Smeets goes back. I, I also looked at, uh, I mean, gosh, you know, this is a tough position. You, you don't want to play moves like bishop c8 to defend the pawn here. Um, th this is just not fun to play for black. I mean, I, I looked at knight d7. This, this kind of made a little more sense to me, trying to go towards the center. But maybe white just... You know, who knows? Maybe White just takes it, and Black's king is still in a world of pain. And the light squares, I mean, this, this is just not, not fun either way. So, Smeets goes back, but he, he gives up the pawn. So, he, Black was up a pawn here. He gives up the pawn to get his king at least out of the middle and out of this, this tactical madness. So, Bishop C2, it's time to go home. 
and take the knight out as well. So black is, you know, he's achieved some kind of consolidation. He's got a little bit of pressure on the queen side. Uh, the, the bishops are, you know, there's, there's pretty good bishops, but there's nothing concrete. And black, the rook on h8, you know, it's, he's like down a rook here. So this is a little worrisome. So he tries g6. He's trying to stop this bishop. So much pressure on h7. Maybe get his king up. If he can get the rook to f8, if he can just castle the rook over somehow, black would be doing fine. But, you know, easier said than done. So rook e1 introducing a little bit of pressure on the e-file, a little x-ray as they call it. Queen b4. So Smeets, um, the guy's a fighter. You know, he's got a, the heart of a champion. With queen b4, he, he's trying to put some pressure on the queen side because, frankly, that's his only chance. If he doesn't, white is probably just going to play like f4 and f5, break this pawn, and um, you know swing the other rook in the center. It's going to be very difficult for black if he's just sitting there trying to defend against everything white's throwing at him. So you gotta you gotta make a stand. You gotta stand up, and, and um, you know Smeets tries. So queen b4 and rook b1 is not a very nice place for the rook, but the queen is kind of out of play a little bit on the queen side. Now bishop c8. This was strange. This this was... I mean, okay, I, I get the idea in that uh, the queen is very well placed here, you know, with this kind of pressure and, and also controlling the e6 square. But it, it's just kind of weird. You know, I was even looking at king g7, and maybe it's just a little too crazy, but I, I looked at, like, queen h6, trying to just go after the... I, I don't think this works, but this is this is the kind of stuff I like to look at and uh, it almost does. You know, king h5, I mean, knight g7, and maybe black is almost getting mated here somehow. But anyway, I, I don't think it works. I mean, I, I think just check and g5, and um, black is probably going to be okay. So it, it, I thought it was a cool idea. So um, no dice on that one. So, um, you know, I thought after rook b1, just king g7. But I guess this check and... It's, maybe it's not so easy. You know, it's not so easy for black to get out of it. So he tries bishop c8, trying to take back some important squares on this diagonal. And it's queen f3. And, and the, the white queen is still very well placed on, on f3. And, you know, now it's controlling a lot of squares in the middle as well. But black does get to play king g7, which is, uh, you know, he's, he's maybe he's going to get this rook in the game. And so knight d5. A lot of a lot of tactics hanging in the air. So knight takes. This probably isn't going to work out too well. Let's just say check. If takes queen takes g6 is mate. So okay, so knight d5 maybe <laughs> he can't take it. It's not looking too hot. So he's got to move the queen. And uh, okay, the queen is really out of the game on a5. Knight f4 and uh, Mrs. Conneru is putting the pressure. She's she's putting the heat on Smeets. And so knight f8, got to defend that square. And h4, nice move. You know, uh, the piece play, there, there's a lot, a lot of control along these, these light squares here. So it's time to introduce a little pawn pressure as well. Bishop takes b2. Rook takes, does not work. Queen takes e1, that's the idea. And so now h5. So, uh, you know, pawns don't really matter. I mean, look at black's king. And the rook on h8, it's been 30 moves, and the rook hasn't even, you know, it still has no chance of getting in the game. But h6, pushing white back, knight e4, nice centralization, good coordination here. All the white pieces are very well protecting each other and coordinated. And g5. So here, it's like... Uh, <laughs> You know, it looks like black is just up a pawn, and he's got some nice pawns and pressure on the queen side, but look at this, these squares next to his king are not so great. So here he tries knight e6, trying to just get the rook out, but bishop b6, and Conneru has got a pretty nice idea. So queen a3, I believe if queen takes maybe just rook e2, would seem to be winning this piece. You know, c3 is not going to work either. I um, think that's the idea. Or, or possibly, you know, some combination of stuff with, with uh, queen f5 is an idea. White has a lot, a lot of pressure. So queen takes a2. So instead, Smeets tried queen a3, maybe thinking that he could get the queen back in the game. Rook e3. 
And uh, the bishop on b2 is kind of no man's land. So now knight b4, nice, you know, switching gears from the, the king's side attack to go ahead and try to pick up this piece. And more importantly, try to trap white's queen or, or black's queen here. Queen a4, and it looks like maybe he's just going to take the piece. He's not just going to take the piece. So, so here, white's got a piece for two black pawns. But most importantly, the black king is still very uncomfortable. So rook f8, just queen g3, just, just eyeing this guy. Knight f4, and now rook b1, defending the d1 square. Knight f4, I think, was a little inaccurate. I think better was queen d1, trying to reroute the queen. Um, but, you know, knight f4, and now rook b1, and now the black queen really is pretty much trapped. Um, king g8, bishop c2, the queen's trapped. He tries, rook takes, and here Smeets resigned. So I, I think he was in a little bit of time trap, time pressure around move 40, and, and that's why the queen got trapped. But, I mean, let's even look at it here. You know, queen e8, queen d1 is like, uh, white's just got the two bishops, the pressure against black's king. It's got a lot of pressure, probably not enough for black to hold there. So instead, uh, just bishop c2, a pretty cool way to trap the queen. And here, you know, knight d5, it seems like queen e4 just kind of stops that, you know, in its tracks with a little mate threat as well. So a really nice, really clean game by Conaru. You know, not scared to sack that pawn with e5 in the opening. And once she, you know, after that inaccurate queen d7 move, she really never looked back. You know, every move creating a new threat and adding new pressure to the position. So very instructive on, on just build you know maintaining and just building and building on the pressure until your opponent just can't take it anymore so this is will stewart from online chess lessons.net and thanks for tuning in